Alrighty, so let's do this. Um, I'm going to go over the workout. We've done a lot of these movements before, and I'm going to kind of give options based on your weight options that you have at home. I know not everyone has a full gym available. So for those who don't and have a fixed weight, we can talk about how to make things more challenging or more appropriately challenging based on how heavy it is. I mean, the workout is pretty simple today. Um, and this is one of those things where you can adjust your volume to what you need because it's for time. So they're timed intervals. So the reps, it's not like do a certain amount of reps. It's like, hey, work for this time, rest for this time. And if you're like, hey, I've done 50 reps already, maybe don't <laughs> slow it down, recover, pick a number. Um, it is already posted. If you can't see it, give me a like a wave or whatever, tell me. Um, but essentially it's three times through. Our first part is three times through. 16 alternating Kazakh squats. I think it's called Kazakh squat, Kazakh wrong, but basically a lateral squat shape. Um, this is something that we can add weight to, of course. Um, we could also add range of motion for anyone who's looking to add range of motion. We might need to take weight down if that's the case. Um, followed by eight three point rows per side. A pause is optional. Um, this is for anyone with a lighter weight, um, someone working on motor control. Or it's just not, honestly, just not heavy enough to row um, to make it feel effective. So pausing for one to three seconds, depending on how light that weight feels at the top of each row. And I'll go over that again, just in case. Um, those Kazi squats are 16 total. That's eight per side, but we will be alternating directions. So you'll be completing 16 reps. The workout itself is really simple, right? You have push-ups and reverse lunges. We're going to be doing one movement per timed interval. And we're going 40 seconds on, 15 seconds off. That's it. I think it's really simple. So when we're doing this, especially with push-ups, they kind of self-regulate. But if you're not sure, pick a number you can do in, start with 30 seconds. Um, and then I by the end of these, basically we're doing this 10 times through total. So five times per each station. You might end up hitting the same number by your fifth one. Right. It's okay if you go to the full 45, um, but if you're failing or slowing down, just take a break, right? 45, 45 seconds is a long time for push-ups. Um, reverse lunges. These can get spicy. Um, they're not bad, but they these can get a little rough. So if you definitely, if you need to slow them down um, or pick a number, uh, make these two-footed squats. If you're like, hey, single leg's not great for me right now, or I need to take a break from single leg, Good old fashioned squats are fine. Adding weight is always optional, but is it necessary? I don't know. You tell me. Today is kind of meant to be quick and efficient. So if that's the weights you're going to get in your way, that might be more of a problem um, than it's worth. Uh, any questions on the workout so far? Cool. Um, let's start with our floor warm up. Um, you're more than welcome to join for that. I kind of loosen it up a little bit. Um, let's just start with some cat calves. Just kind of warm up the back or some warm up check in. For most of it's very early. Doing your 10 or so reps. Once you complete your 10 reps ish, or before we do our bird dogs, let's just get some sort of full body circles. So, what I like to think about is setting my hips kind of, I would guess, counter or counterclockwise. Just making gentle circles for my whole body. I'm not really doing, I'm not going full child's pose. Okay, I'm going to go five kind of rotations. Right now, I'm going counterclockwise. Let's get one clockwise. After five rotations, Back towards hips, back over the shoulders. Let's just change it up. Let's go clockwise for the opposite direction that you started in.
Uh, after your five rotations per side, let's go to a quick child's pose. Don't fall asleep on me here, but let's just kind of get a quick stretch, hands above the head. And gently send the hips forward into kind of this up dog. You need to go a little lower, you can go a little lower. Come back to the top when you're ready. Let's do alternating bird dogs next. So kind of back to our beautiful programming, if you will. Send the legs and the arms. Use up the foot. Alternating these. Completing 10. If you like to do more, you can do a few more. Imagine you have a glass of water in your little back. You don't want to spill it. All right, once you have your 10-ish, right, give or take, let's go to 90-90s and have a seat. Be just shoulder width, give or take. Just gently drop off to one side. So give one leg comes fully off the ground as I do this. I'm just going to do a total of 10 again. We'll say you find yourself moving on this one. I try and have my voice scoot a few inches. That's okay. That's pretty, pretty typical of this exercise. Right. Okay. So let's go ahead and. Just warm up our shoulders a little bit. We can do this. We're gonna just go ahead and do our, full, I guess, floor, floor angels. I'm not sure what else to call these things. Um, kind of a posterior shoulder warm up. Um, maybe a rehab piece if you've done any kind of shoulder stuff. I'll explain it sitting up and do it secondly. Um, be laying face down, toes together, and you're gonna basically lift up the hand to be skimming the ground with your fingers. Um, really just kind of get the back of the shoulders warmed up. And I'm gonna be making a W shape and a Y shape and then coming back down again. Um, and you can go as wide on the Y as you need or as narrow on the Y. So as overheady or forward as your shoulders will allow. So I don't wanna go into anything I can't handle. Um, so from here, I'm just gonna scoot back a little bit. So from here, I'm gonna go ahead and lift my hands up. W, Y, W. You can touch the ground. You want just getting the shoulder, right? Getting my shapes, W, Y. And we're just getting the back of the shoulder warmed up. Having 10 of these guys. Trying to keep the shoulder off the ground, or sorry, pec off the ground. So shoulders pulled back. And keep, it's okay to keep the head or the forehead on the floor. So we're not trying to lift up the head necessarily. Just pressing the head on the ground to give your out of camera angle. And it's okay to rest your hands when they're by your legs. So you can kind of rest the shoulders for a second. Yeah. Good thing you lift up the hands, make a W shape, make a Y shape, W. We're just getting the back of the shoulder gently warmed up. We're not doing a whole lot here. Okay. Once you've done your 10 reps, you can come back to a seated or standing position depending on your setup.
I know they're down there working, but sometimes when Elizabeth and Joseph disappear down below, I'm like, maybe they're just like napping down there. I think Joseph has napped before in our in our morning chats for sure. Yes, in the chat part, yes. Definitely. Yeah, definitely, which is totally valid, by the way. That I, I'm not upset. <laughs> it's excellent multitasking. It's like homeroom. You're like, I'm technically here. Okay, I'm in my seat. Did you want me to pay attention? That doesn't count. <laughs> that extra. That's like, they'll cost you extra. Um, so let's talk about our Kazi squats. Well, we're going to start on weighted um, for, I guess, unless you're familiar with these or wants to add weight off the bat. And you're just like any single leg work while we've got both feet on the ground for this, we're going to be loading one side at a time. So this is okay if we use this more as an active recovery, totally valid. So unweighted and fully supported if you want like a broomstick or uh, something that just hang on to a door jam is great if you want to use that um and or okay you can also make this like a physical exercise where you add load and challenge so range of motion or weight i pick one um and i would always opt for range of motion first but that's just me um i am horrifically stiff so you're gonna be very impressed about what i'm about to do so here we go um our feet are gonna be a little wider than normal Right, so if I squat, this is my my typical squat stance. Personally, I want to take my feet out a little bit. Um, not a huge amount. Um, this is a matter of taste. Regardless of whether your feet turn out or they're completely forward, I want your knee and ankle to always be stuck on top of each other when squatting. So whether again, I don't care if you're this guy or if you're this guy. I want this relationship to remain the same while you're squatting. So ultimately, when I'm doing this, I'm going side to side. I don't have a huge range of motion here, and that's okay. So I'm going to go to my this leg first. I'm going to sit onto my right leg. My left foot can turn up. My chest is up-ish, right? So from the side, you should be able to see it looks like I'm squatting from the side. This looks like a squat. That's what it should look and feel like. You can go lower if you'd like. And we're going to alternate side to side. This foot does whatever it needs to do. A nice active stretch recovery movement. Or we can add weight to this. You might feel a pull or stretch in this adductor inseam. Don't pull your groin. That's silly. But let's have you do 16 total. All right, so find your space. It's okay when you kind of squeeze yourself in like a puzzle piece. You can make it funny and face each other. That might be weird though. <laughs> It could be like this too. Yeah, you could do, you can play a game of, I don't know if Elizabeth or Joseph are into that. You can kind of play. I'm doing, yeah. I'm doing it with Elizabeth even though I'm not there. Yeah. <laughs> nice tights, Arisa. Do you see her? So you can make this as knee heavy as you want. So the more forward you travel with the knee while keeping your heel down, the more knee intensive, which is not inherently a bad thing if you're doing it on purpose. Um, if you want more of a hamstring butt or less knee heavy, send your hips back like you're sitting back down to something. Again, it's a matter of taste. There's nothing wrong with doing a knee forward. Okay. There are people who could sit like butt cheek to to, to uh, calf on this movement. I don't get it. Shocking. Um, I was one of those people once, not anymore. Um, so next thing is our three point row. Okay, so this is one where, again, this is we, I'll show you with a pause, without a pause, and kind of a, a few options for support. Three point row just means you have three points of contact. You have both of your feet and your hand on something. So whether it's your knee, a bench, a sofa, Whatever it is, right? Um, doesn't really matter what it is as long as you're supported. And as I do this, I have my weight on the opposite of my standing leg. I'm putting my hand, in this case, on my knee. My chest is still up, so you can see the top, forgive me, of my CrossFit shirt. It's a nice tank top. That's why I wear it. Um, my chest stays up, and I'm going to pull my elbow back. So my neck is long. I'm not crunching up this shoulder. And if this is light enough, I might be like, you know, this is too light for me. It's my only weight. I might hold this for one two, back down, hold one, maybe three seconds, depending on how heavy, back down, 
and repeat this for eight. So if I hold this, it gets drastically harder and that's not necessarily a bad thing. Or if it's heavy enough, just move through your reps like you would normally. Both are fine, right? Chest stays up, pull the elbow back towards the hip. A little gap between your elbow and your body is okay. We're doing eight per side. If you like a rotation here, that's great. A little rotation, look over the shoulder if you want, but not a huge amount. This is upper back rotation, not spinal or global rotation. Once you have your eight per side, and honestly, if you're sharing weights, just switch stations, right? Just do one or the other. After we've done eight per side, that's one round. We have two more of those guys. So the following two rounds can be a little more at your own pace, adding pauses or taking pauses out or adding weight to the quasi squat if those were feeling good to you and you want to add more. Otherwise, keeping them unweighted is a great active recovery piece um, just to move the body. Who are you playing with now, Meg? I'm still playing with Elizabeth even oh. if she's <laughs> it's uh helping me keep my remind me to keep, keep my chest up and yeah. it punches my glute out there yeah it, it helps you kind of counterbalance that hip back motion um and it's a fun game to play you can imagine who you're playing with i was never good at those like oh yeah things when i was a kid None of the girls ever asked me to play those things. So I'm pretending that Elizabeth and I are making up for lost childhood. I feel like Elizabeth would play with you. I feel like she would be nice enough to play with you. She would teach me instead of make fun of me. Oh, I think so, for sure. I don't know if I was ever good at them. I just, my friends played with me. I don't know if I was actually any good at it, but I think they just, you know, didn't care. And feel free if you have the option to change your weights. So if you are weighting the Cossack squat, fine. Or even adding weight to the rows, right? Okay, so that feels like a three out of 10. You're like, got this all day. Go ahead and hold it. So pull, pull back, hold, two, three, back down. Hold. Takes longer, I know. You're holding at the top, not the bottom. That's cheeky. <laughs> the bottom is a rest. <laughs> holding at the top is going to be... Where you get a little more input. <laughs> it's like putting your car in neutral, be like, look, I'm driving, sort of. Um, <laughs> you're rolling downhill. Um, again, the pause is more of an option. It just kind of gives you more information. You don't have to stick with it. But sometimes when I only have a certain number of weights and let's say my 18 pounds here, it's like, what? Got it, no problem. Think less bicep curl and think more elbow back. There we go. Although I'm not opposed to bicep curl, but they're good for your elbows for anybody with wonky, for with any loose elbows. Is anyone familiar with like the weighted vests, like the whole weighted vest thing? Yeah. So whether it's a rock or like a physical vest you wear, I just saw an advertisement. I'm watching Tour de France. No one's surprised by this, I'm sure. Um, watch an advertisement for a company that makes a very lightly weighted vest. So something that you can run and jump in. So a little less heavy. Um, and they're like, it's a new technology. And it's like, it's a weighted vest. They've been around since forever, guys. Don't get ahead of yourselves. But what are you going to do? I have one behind my couch. It's dusty. Nice job. So I think everyone's approaching, if not in, round three.
Nice. The height of that elbow is not super critical, by the way. So if it goes up high, that's great. But really, we're just trying to get the lat and the back of the shoulder to kick in. Part of this too, if you start to feel like this movement's weird and you can't get your lat to engage, chances are you're probably too vertical, which sounds like a funny thing to say. But your chest is closer to the ground, the pullback makes more sense. If you're too upright, you're like, I feel like I'm starting a like a lawnmower or a, you know, an outboard motor. It's a little odd, which is why that might feel funny. Um, beautiful. Just three, Risa. We did one together. Was that? Yeah. So I think you're doing, that's your four. You're starting four. I need to do four. We're all done. Um, so let's take a quick break. Um, we have our, next is our push-ups and our reverse lunges. So like I said, we are doing five rounds of each thing. Right? We're going to alternate push ups first, lunges second. We're doing 45 seconds of work, 15 seconds of rest. Um, weight is optional for the reverse lunges. If you want to weight your push ups, fine by me. Um, it's kind of awkward to get a weight on your back, though. That's the only thing. Um, so I would say think about how many you can slash want to do. Like I said, push ups will self regulate pretty easily. You'll just stop doing them. Um, reverse lunges. Not so much. We can do a lot of those. So I would say if you don't want to do more than, I'm going to make math easy, more than 100. Okay, that's a lot, but there you are. All right, 100 divided by 5 is now 20. So don't do more than 20 reps per 45 seconds. All right, so. Are we alternating? Each and it will be alternating, correct. Yeah, so 100 total, for example, right? or whatever else. So these will be alternating steps. So just think about general volume and divide by five. And again, those will still self-regulate. You will slow down. Um, but I don't want any message being like, you killed me. It's like, yeah, but do a little math. When you're doing interval work, you need to figure out how intense you want to go with this stuff. Push-ups, of course, can be whatever they need to be. So if you need to use the knees, you can elevate the push-up. If you have a band, the bands go across they're often called hip circles. You can use them for your shoulders too. Um, whatever it is you need. And if, rule of thumb, if you're slowing down, take a break. Even with this within that working set, that's okay. Um, reverse lunges, like I said, going to two feet is fine. Just squat instead. Two-footed squat, no problem. Um, or if you like a forward lunge, who am I to judge? Go for a forward lunge. Um, that's fine by me. But just make sure they're alternating. Okay. And I'm going to basically call three, two, one, go. And then rest, go, rest, go, rest, go, rest for the next 10 minutes, All right? World's best coach, kidding. Um, a lot of counting, but there we are. Um, any questions on the movements themselves? Um, All right, let me go ahead and get my clock rolling here. Um, so I think we're all near the ground, which is good. All right, we're gonna count up. All right, my friends, um, we're gonna get this started. We're going in 10 seconds. Going in three, two, one, and go. If you finish those set number of push-ups or set number of lunges prior to 45 seconds, that's fine. Okay, it's not a problem. You just rest a little longer. So you can lay all the way down, Arisa. So even if you're doing less reps, so you can lay all the way down, chest all the way down, and then it's going to worm back up. And you're, oh, that's great. Raising the hands is a bonus. No need to do a hand release. That's silly, unless you want to. We're resting in two, one, and rest. So we have about 10 seconds remaining. So 15 seconds of rest total, but that's from the end of your interval. And three, two, one, and go. We have our lunges next. Forward or backwards. Back knee does not need to touch the ground or the knee that's stepping. 
was on YouTube, Instagram, whatever. Two, one, take a break. It's okay if it's uneven. Don't worry about it. If you're that bust, start on the opposite leg on the next round or this next, next round. Two, one, and go. You want to add a little down dog into this, gives you a quick break. Also a stretch, not a post, just a heads up. You want to. I need your chest to touch the ground every time, even means a little bit of a warm up, which is fine. They slow down, take a break. Not gonna lie, I haven't done push ups in a while. That's all right. Two, one, rest. Yeah, and that means, like, like I said, they self regulate pretty easy. You just, your body will tell you when. <laughs> oh, I just went, okay, five rounds, 10, and then I went, no, let's try 12. So we're doing 12. Great. I love it. Two, one, and go. And it's like, it's the thing is with reps is like, the nice thing is you can give yourself a rep scheme. So like 10 to 12, starting at 12, ending at 10, right? Or even like eight to 12. Um, gives you a little breathing room. I'm being honest, I hate push-ups too. I mean, like I do them, but it's kind of like boiled Brussels sprouts. I eat them because your parents gave them to you, you know, not because I want to. Now that I actually know how to cook them, but still push-ups are hard. Go ahead and rest. I just haven't done them since the last time I did strength with you because it's been just mobility, you know, and functional movement. Yeah, training volume. I get it. Makes a lot of sense. All right, y'all. Next round in two, one, and go. Seriously, I'm laying all the way down. I can't see your floor, but I'm guessing that's not your floor based on your elbow bending. Yeah, there we go. And if it means you do three instead of five or five instead of eight, that's fine with me. Probably not fine with you, but still. I will say you don't have to raise your hands off the ground though, unless you're just a glutton for punishment. Two, one, rest. Yeah. All right, we have our lunges next in three, Two, one, and go. Two, one, rest. All right, well over halfway. We're starting round seven in three, two, one, and go. Seven of 10, so that's good.
two, one, and rest. All right, my friends, we're starting again in three, two, one, and go. Second to last set of lunges, okay? Second to last set. Honestly, Meg, if you want to just keep this more as a stretch, just go and kick that leg back a little more and just squeeze your butt. So like, yeah, you don't have to actually, you can just make a little hold. More of a stretch than lunges. As long as it feels good. Feels more stability, but that might feel nice. Yeah, and the butt squeeze kind of tilts the pelvis back, neutralizes it, and opens up the hip. And rest. Honestly, it's what I want to do right now, but I <laughs> won't. Um, Final push-ups, final lunges in three, two, one, and go. All the way down, my friends, so you lay all the way down the ground. Or if you're able to and have the ability to posts up on something, a bench, sturdy furniture, elevating your push-up is a great option. Resting as you need, of course. Your body will tell you self-regulates pretty easy on these guys. Two, one, rest. Fine, that was your last push-up of the day. Very exciting. Last lunges, we hope. Okay? unless you're walking upstairs. We're going in three, two, one, and go. And if you wanna to add to that stretch, Meg, the leg that's back, pick that arm up and reach it across your body, right up and over your head, yeah. Again, it's just a way to kind of add, we're lengthening that side. Um, you don't want any arm in, just don't want to add the arm. And rest indefinitely. If you want to make it even, make those lunges even. Okay, so we have a little bit of time left, which is okay. The day was pretty simple and we have done most of these movements. There wasn't a whole lot of, um, I would say, new skill work, more just like refining out some stuff that we've already played with um, and applying them right to bigger movements. So what we can do here is with our remaining approximately 10 minutes, um, is a bit of recovery. So if you want a foam roll, if you have a foam roller, um, you don't have a foam roller, you can stretch out. If you need an extra 10 minutes on your day, it's okay. Maybe you go ahead and quick roll out and get yourselves going right into the day. But if you want to stay, I would remain here. Um, let's kind of go over basic foam rolling stuff. And if you have questions about soft tissue work, Right? Whether it's with a ball, Theragun, uh, any sort of external tool, okay? That could be someone's elbow, right? Whatever it is. Um, let me know, okay? But either way, I've said this a lot and I'll say it again. Whenever you're stretching or mobilizing or having work done to you, um, you should be able to take a full inhale through your nose and a full exhale through your mouth. Um, that is a sign of safety. The full inhale nose, especially the nose, is you can tolerate this and it's fine. Full exhale, hey, it's hard, challenging, but I'm also fine. 
breath holds. You just pain sweats maybe not the end of the world as long as you're breathing. Numbness is not good. Nervous nerviness is not good. Um, sometimes pain is not a good thing, um, especially if you can't breathe. So a breath holds your first sign that you've gone too far or someone's treating you too much. Um, the hamstring is a tough one to get. Um, you can try the foam roller if that feels good or reset. That's great. Um, if you have a ball, right? And I was not, this is not a great example. If you have a ball at home um, or something, you know, even a half circle, um, see, putting it on or right in front of your sit bone. So you have your sit bone and your, uh, your hamstring attaches towards the knee, right? You can sit on it on a hard surface, obviously in a sofa room that's not super helpful um so in the meantime what you're doing is great but if you need to go for the insertion point at your butt that's helpful um if you have the ground that works just fine with i find sitting on a chair is a little easier but do what you need to do um and if you need to with the ball if you're sitting on the ground you can kind of hover on it so you don't have to like sit on it immediately so you want to be just so find your sit bone and move towards your knee you'll find that insertion point of the hamstring if that's too acute, if you have like a small ball, go ahead and put like a, a tea towel on top or like a sweatshirt and that'll diffuse the pressure a little. Um, quads are always a nice one. That's pretty an easy target. Um, well, why not? Go across. I think actually, I don't know if we've talked about this, but one piece I think is often overlooked is your lats. We don't really talk about them a lot, but you use them a lot, especially in swimming. So we can we can address them by laying on your foam roller. We want to be kind of in the armpit, but like just where the armpit starts. So this is one where my hand is down, my head gets tired, I can rest my head. Um, and instead of rolling up and down like you would your lat, your quads, I'm going to go forward and back. So I'm going to just kind of roll forward towards my pec or chest tissue, and then rolling back towards my shoulder blade. I feel pretty okay right now. So if you are finding that's the easy hand on the head, if it's not easy, don't. Right, that's simple enough. Movement is optional. So maybe you find a spot and you stay there. It's fine, but this is a super simple way to address even rolling after rolling out your back. This is a nice kind of secondary piece. Um, it serves a few purposes. It can increase your lung capacity or what feels like your lung capacity. We're loosening up the, I'll say fascia or fascia, depending on who you talk to, um, around the torso. So when I go and breathe in again in a second, I'll have more ability to expand my torso. So when I'm working harder, my rib cage can physically expand more, which is very handy when you're breathing hard and doing endurance sports. So this has a couple effects on me. When I do this, I can sit up and if I rotate my right side last rotation, I have way more rotation. I can almost, I'm almost like my left side, which is pretty shocking. The other thing, if I take a big breath in, I almost feel like my, my right side inflates more because it is. So it serves a few functions. It allows for a little more thoracic rotation, so upper back rotation, um, as well as just improving breath capacity. You do not have to move, by the way. So if you find yourself in this position, you're like, this is pretty gnarly, just stay here, rest your head on your fist. Right, just gentle compression. Um, if you find yourself that you can you can roll, then go ahead and roll side to side. We're going across the muscle fiber as opposed to with. This side's a little more tender, but that's okay. I'm still breathing. Hand above the head is a bonus, by no means a requirement here. So you can go from the armpit onto the ribcage if your formula is soft enough. So as long as it's not straight up PVC pipe or plastic, you should be okay. You can do whatever you want to do, whatever feels comfortable. 
and you can kind of go well into the ribs here. As long as you don't have any bruising disorders, you should be fine. Taking your time with this. Hey, when I do that, my elbow goes numb. Does that mean I need to do it more or do it less or am I doing it wrong? Good question. So generally speaking, numbness is not ideal, right? Even if it's localized numbness. Uh, so I would suggest maybe not laying on it as hard. So maybe you're just compressing something that a nerve that's a little wound up or whatever. So maybe if you try just potentially either, if you try, it's hard to lay less on it because we're laying on our side. But if you find maybe it's too specific, an option is trying to make the foam roller bigger. So kind of like the idea of putting a, a towel over the lacrosse ball, just kind of diffusing that pressure a little more. So you're not poking on something specific that might kind of cause numbness. If that's causing a little bit of irritation, honestly, the ball works fine too. Against a wall, right? Just kind of like rolling it up and down. Or if you're like a, like a the percussion devices, the Theraguns or whatever brand, that's a nice way to address that without um, the, the numb elbow. So generally I'd say numbness, not avoid it, but be aware of it and see if you can just lay less on it to some degree or diffuse that pressure. If that's still a no, there's other ways to get your lats too. We can go more of a stretch based thing where, you know, you reach your hand up over a door jam if you're tall enough and just stretch out. So um, generally speaking, I would say, yeah, we don't love the idea of numbing, like went numb sensation. So the lack of sensation can be equally problematic. Um, friends, that was kind of us on our time. We can kind of finish off this session. Um, the lats are nice and easy. Like I said, it's a great the upper back is just a nice everyone feels good running out their back. The lats are a nice piece. Um, if you drive a lot, that's your blind spot. If you rotate, right? We all have lack of rotation on one side. That's okay. It happens, but by releasing one side, right? That quick little peek over the shoulder for traffic. That's part of what we're addressing here, right? So if you're missing one side, which I think most of us do, um, it's okay to address that. But from a performance perspective, it's a great way to release, um, just allow for more breath capacity, essentially. Um, serves a lot of purposes and often overlooked, even though the muscle goes from your armpit almost to your waist. So there you go. Um, if you've been lost swimming, that'll be nice. Bye, Joseph. Take care. Um, friends, have a good morning. I'm going to go run up the hill now. And I might have a cup, cup, of, cup of coffee first, though. Thank you. Thanks for showing up. Mate. I know you've been crazy busy. I hope that felt restorative versus like hard nope. it was perfect good good yep. nice job y'all have a good rest Always of your day thank you thanks bye bye